driver for running her over. And good news for L train subway riders about the upcoming shutdown. Next. America with Mega Jackpots. It's Mega Millions. Happy St. Patrick's Day, America. I'm John Crow. It's Friday, March 17th, and tonight's Mega Millions jackpot is an estimated annuitized $131 million. To win that jackpot, you must match these five white balls plus that gold Mega Ball. Now, let's see if I can make you a millionaire tonight. Our first winning number tonight is 58. That's followed by 31. Up next, we have 11. Your next number is... 27 and your final white ball for this Friday evening is 60. Now for the Mega Ball. Tonight's Mega Ball number is 10. Again, tonight's winning numbers are 58, 31, 11, 27, 60, and the gold Mega Ball is 10. Now, no matches all six numbers Tuesdays. Jack Puck be $140 million. Good luck and play on, America. Now, New York's number one news. Channel 7 Eyewitness News. She was killed doing her job. Tonight, new details about an EMT's murder, the widespread mourning, and her accused murderer. We have exclusive video about one of his most recent arrests. And we'll have the latest on the investigation, all that in a moment. But first, the calendar says two days away from spring, but Mother Nature, she must have lost her calendar. Meteorologist Lee Goldberg says get ready for more snow. He's at the weather wall, timing it out in his AccuWeather forecast. Lee? All right, and if you don't want that much snow, maybe you'll like what I have to say here with the trend with this storm over the weekend. First of all, we have mainly clear skies right now, and we don't have a lot of very cold air leading into the storm, so that's good. That means that any wet snow would have to come down steadily for accumulation, and the steadiest would really be tomorrow night into Sunday morning. Winter weather advisories into northwest New Jersey, they start after midnight, and that'll go to the wee hours of the morning on Sunday. It has not been expanded eastward, and that's significant. Let me tell you why. You have this area of rain or snow showers having a tough time making it ease. May not get in here till mid-morning, but it's light mixed during the day tomorrow. No problems with your travel. The key is this low right here. It's going to sweep underneath us and then strengthen off the coast, but it's looking weaker and less organized, and that could lead to less snowfall for us. So what you need to know is a mix is going to start toward dawn, although now it's trending a little later toward mid or late morning. If it's dawn, it's south and west of New York City. It is going to end as light wet snow on Sunday morning. The mix by day tomorrow, it's just wet roads. But steadier snow develops tomorrow evening, especially north and west. It's in question along the coast. So right now, what I've done to our snowfall total map, I've taken the higher totals away from eastern Long Island. A general two to four in here, although focus on the lower end of the ranges here, and I have lowered part of New York City. So we're starting to massage this just a little bit based on some of the trends we're seeing. Tomorrow morning, if there's any light snow or rain at south and west, we start at 34 degrees. I'll have more details on the changing forecast coming up in AccuWeather in a few minutes. Bill, back to you for now. We will see you then. Thank you. Stay with Eyewitness News this weekend as we track the snow. Lee, as well as his colleagues Jeff Smith and Amy Freeze, will be updating the track of the storm on TV and ABC 7 NY. Now to that killing of EMT Yadira Arroyo, the 44-year-old mother of five killed when she was run over last night by her own ambulance that had just been carjacked. The accused killer tonight facing a judge, but also facing angry members of the FDNY who showed up at the courthouse. Eyewitness News reporter Safan Kim has exclusive details about the suspect's prior troubles and run-ins with police. But we begin with Eyewitness News reporter Josh Einiger live in the more senior section of the Bronx with the latest. Josh. Bill, they don't call the FDNY New York's bravest for nothing. In about 150 years, they've lost more than 1,100 members in the line of duty but no one has ever died like this. The screams have subsided, the crime scene tape all but gone. In their place, candles and flowers and silence. We're here for you 24-7, serving this great city. That's it's right. time we get justice, justice. Yes. 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 But a few miles away, it was a scene of anger, a visceral, unadulterated fury. As Yadi Arroyo's brothers and sisters packed into the Bronx criminal courthouse and shouted down the lawyer. Whatever happened in this case He's a criminal. was certainly He's a criminal. A criminal. of the man charged with her murder. I'm innocent. I ain't do nothing. Jose Gonzalez is just 25, but before last night had been arrested 31 times. Eyewitness News obtained this video as he rode on the back of Yadi Arroyo's ambulance moments before a pedestrian flagged her and her partner down to let them know he was there. They got out, he got in, and backed over Arroyo before moving forward, dragging her body across the intersection. Her partner screamed for help. 
I was just glad I was there to stop the threat. So happened MTA police officer Daniel McDade was driving by on his way to work. This is his police car on the scene. He subdued Gonzalez. In this exclusive video, you can see several good Samaritans helping to hold him down. But it was too late to help the EMT, her body lifeless in the street. My heart breaks for, for the victim and her family and her partner and the entire FDNY. A department still reeling, now mourning, and vowing to remember. She will live on in the life she saved and the people she helped. I'm sorry. And there is bunting now hung over the garage doors at Yadi Arroyo's EMS Station 26. You can also see some candles there at the base of those garage doors. The FDNY tonight is planning a ceremonial funeral as the Bronx DA's office plans a prosecution for her murder. And we're live in the Marcenia section of the Bronx. Josh Einiger, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Oh, it's just so sad. Josh, thank you. Now to the suspect. And tonight we're learning a lot more about Jose Gonzalez. Something very bad must have happened to this guy during his 25 years of life. A troubled man with a long history of violence and arrests. And now he's charged with murder. Why was he even on the streets? Eyewitness News reporter Stefan Kim with exclusive details about Gonzalez's past with the cops. Stefan. Well, Bill, tonight Eyewitness News has obtained exclusive video of Jose Gonzalez's most recent prior running with the law. Most recent because he has walked into this courthouse dozens of times. There are residents in his neighborhood who had hoped he had never walked out of this building a free man. They may finally get what they want, but for it to have come to this to get that, well, nobody wanted that. It is an uncontrollable rage caged up in the back of this NYPD van. What you're watching is exclusive video of Jose Gonzalez arrested and handcuffed in the Bronx for criminal mischief. Witnesses say he had just kicked out that back window. The window flies out. Um, as you can see, like it has a protective shield on it, so it didn't shatter totally, but it hit one of the officers in the face. This arrest, no, it's false arrest. happening on February 25th. Then he spat at um, one of the female officers and he started saying stuff like, you know, um, you should get raped and stuff like that. On this day, residents in the Fordham section of the Bronx knew this face as the face of terror. No one knew then this would become the face of an alleged killer. You see, in this hard part of the Bronx, both Gonzalez and EMT Yadira Arroyo, well known. In fact, Arroyo lived just a few blocks from her alleged killer. But they are known here for very different reasons. One for helping others, the other for being a menace. He hangs out in the hallways. Um, he hangs out down the block, um, out the block, all through the neighborhood. He's always just starting trouble. <laughs> robbing people. He does drugs. Gonzalez, while leaving the 43rd precinct today, muttering these say, words. Uh, I'm innocent. I ain't do nothing. I'm innocent. Now, for residents who knew him, they say they've heard him say those words so many times before. Reporting live in the Bronx, Stefan Kim, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. Stefan, thank you. This weekend, we invite you to stay with Eyewitness News on air and online for continuing coverage of this tragic story. When we learn more about how Idara Arroyo will be remembered by her family and by the FDNY, we will pass that immediately along to you. Is the controversy finally over about President Trump's unsubstantiated claim that President Obama wiretapped him during the campaign last year? It might be. Republican chairman of the House Intelligence Committee says he's satisfied with the documents delivered today by the Justice Department. He's quoted as saying he doesn't believe the information would support Mr. Trump's wiretapping accusation. Meanwhile, the president tonight refusing to back down on his unfounded claim, even during a pivotal diplomatic meeting today. He doubled down on his wiretap claim against Mr. Obama. President meeting for the first time a face to face with German Chancellor Merkel. It was people there say a rather chilly photo op in the Oval Office. Earlier, the White House issued an apology, apology to the U.K. over Press Secretary Sean Spicer's comments, citing a story on Fox News accusing British intelligence of helping Mr. Obama spy on Mr. Trump. But later, the president, with a surprising defense, saying his administration shouldn't be blamed for citing news stories to back up their claims. We said nothing. All we did was quote a certain uh, very talented legal mind who was the one responsible for saying that on television. I didn't make an opinion on it. That was a statement made by a very talented lawyer on Fox. And so you shouldn't be talking to me, you should be talking to Fox. Thank you, man. 
President, President, President went on to joke that spying is something he has in common with the German Chancellor. You'll remember the U.S. reportedly monitored Merkel's phone conversations back in 2014. A laptop loaded with national security information, including floor plans for Trump Tower, missing tonight after it was stolen from a Secret Service agent's car in Brooklyn. Officials say the laptop is encrypted and the information on it cannot be easily accessed. Tonight, New York cops hoping surveillance video will lead them to the gunman who shot three people in the Bronx. Let's get to say the man in this surveillance video opened fire on a livery cab yesterday. This is in the Fordham Heights section. Two passengers were shot. Police say the gunman then shot a third person inside a nearby store. Motive for the shooting remains unclear. All the shooting victims survived. A terrifying escape. Straight ahead on Eyewitness News, a young boy snatched off the street while he was walking to school. You will hear how he escaped from the basement of a building and what we've now learned about the man in custody. Plus, the MTA making a big announcement tonight about a major construction project affecting the L train. Monday, months after the deadly Hoboken train crash, if there's still danger riding the rails. It's such an easy thing to fix. Seven on Your Side Investigates makes a disturbing discovery. It really worries me. About how engineers are being tested for safety. Monday on Eyewitness News at 5. Maestros lead with confidence, exactness, inspiration. At GMC, we're in tune with that degree of precision. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the GMC Acadia. The next generation SUV has arrived. Current lessees switch to GMC and get this low mileage lease on this 2017 Acadia SLE1 for around $259 per month. Visit TristateGMC.com. Leave it to the pros. I am a pro. I made this lawn from seed, pride, and less water than you'd think. To those who'd say the grass is greener on the other side, I politely disagree. Pennington Smart Seed, guaranteed to grow with 30% less water. Reclaim your turf. Join the circle of life at the Lion King. There is one place that you can count on to help you save time, save money, shop right. This week, save 40% on your favorite cuts of assorted Purdue Fresh Poultry. At ShopRite, we're all about food. We're all about savings. We're all about you. Oh, yes. We should put this on the mantle. Oh, or in a box. Out with the old. Um. In with the better. Make room for your new Hyundai. The spring cleaning sales event is here, and it's time to save. Better is the reason to buy Hyundai. Today is the day. And this is the reason to buy now. Lease a Santa Fe Sport for just $139 a month for 24 months. But don't wait. These offers end March 31st. A 10-year-old boy kidnapped today in the Bronx by a man who police say is a registered sex offender. And somehow the little boy had the wherewithal and the smarts to escape from the apartment where he was taken. The suspect now being questioned by cops. Here's Iowa's News reporter, A.J. Ross. Intercepted on his way to school by a stranger Friday morning, police say an unsuspecting 10-year-old boy had no clue the danger he was in. It's just ripping to hear that because my daughter goes to school on her own. My son goes to school on his own and in front of my building, you know, that's obviously nerve-wracking. Investigators say the suspect struck up a conversation with the kid along Kingsbridge Avenue around 8.30, then snatched him and threw him in the back of a gray van. The boy was taken inside the basement of this Bailey Avenue apartment, but when the suspect left him alone, the boy managed to escape. I'm happy for the boy. He's heroic in my eyes, and um, I'm sorry to hear that. That brave little boy ran all the way here to the 50th precinct, where he not only told police what happened, he also positively ID'd that perv. Police confirm the suspect is a registered sex offender. He was arrested at his home and remains in police custody with charges still pending. I'm going to actually go online tonight to see where are the sex offenders because I heard, you know, there's a website to check to, like, really update my awareness. Well, I'm glad that that's the ending and that this guy is gone. But I hope that this is a, a, a sign for people who are, who are thinking these kinds of things that there, there's no good outcome in it. They're going to get caught one way or another. And there's, there's, uh, there's consequences. 
In Kingsbridge, I'm A.J. Ross, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Some good news for passengers of the L subway train. Work on the train's Canarsie Tunnel may flow faster than expected. MTA now says it will take 15 months to repair the tunnel under the East River, three months shorter than previously planned. It was damaged, you'll recall, during Superstorm Sandy. The MTA will seek approval for the new plans this week. The project includes improvements to two stations and a new substation that makes room for more L trains. The tunnel will actually shut down for work beginning in April 2019. If your commute has anything to do with the subway or MTA trains, bridges, or tunnels, hang on to your wallets. Fares and tolls are going up this weekend. Beginning Sunday, weekly MetroCard rates go up by a buck to $32. Monthly rate will be $121. That's up more than four. But the $275 base fare will stay the same. As for the tolls, EC Pass rates will go up by less than 25 cents. If you pay cash, the increase will be anywhere from 6 to 9% depending on the crossing. We're hearing tonight from the Good Samaritan who likely saved a driver's life when a car got stuck on the tracks in Rockland County. An 81-year-old man in Suffern driving his car through an opening near a station's main platform and right onto the tracks, and that's where he got stuck. Passenger waiting for a train saw what happened, tried to coax the driver out of the car, but the door couldn't open. I jump on the tracks and go around to his passenger door and get him out through his passenger side and get him off onto the platform. Police responded. Trains in the area stopped. Good news about that. And a tow truck removed the vehicle. But what caused the unidentified driver to make such a dangerous mistake, we still don't know. The nation's largest St. Patrick's Day parade steaming up Fifth Avenue today. And for the 256th time, it did not disappoint. The parade filled with the sounds of bagpipes, Irish brogues, and cheering. An estimated 2 million spectators lining New York's most ritzy shopping stretch to watch. 150,000 marchers this year, including military members, teachers, police, and firefighters, and high school bands. Weather could cause some problems for this year's New York City Half Marathon this weekend. Runners picking up this morning their bibs at the Metropolitan Pavilion in Manhattan. Organizers say they are watching Lee Goldberg's AccuWeather forecast and will react if necessary to the predicted snow. More than 20,000 runners are expected to race. If a decision is made, we'll have it here on Eyewitness News, on our website, and our news app. And Bill, I am encouraged by the trend for the New York City Half Marathon. Here's the forecast for 7 a.m. on Sunday. There could be a lingering snow shower around, but I don't think the snow is as steady and it's moving out and cloudy and cold for sure, about 32 degrees, but with limited accumulation of potential good signs as we get closer to the half marathon. Of course, the Empire State Building looking beautiful in St. Patrick's Day colors. We have mainly clear skies out there. Not terribly cold. It's been a nice evening. Bit of a chilly breeze at times. High of 47. That's our warmest day since last Friday. Closest we've been to normal in a while. There are your sunrise and sunset times for tomorrow. So we're going to be clouding up overnight. I don't think you'll wake up to much rain and snow. I think it'll get going during the morning hours. When I say get going, it's just off and on wet snow or rain drops through the middle of the day. Look at the temperatures actually get close to 40 degrees. And then the precipitation is going to get steadier later in the day and tomorrow night and likely change over to periods of wet snow. You see the clouds that are working in now. And this is really just a broken area of some snow and rain. It's running into dry air. I wouldn't even be shocked if north and east of New York City tomorrow morning there's still a little filtered sunshine out there and then clouds will thicken and during the day it's off and on rain and snow showers. The key to this forecast is this low that's diving out of the lakes and that that would be responsible for tomorrow night's snow. It dives to our south and then strengthens off the coast. But look what happens on the new future cast. First of all, tomorrow morning, that's why I was talking about. Look how much colder it is north and east with still some thin spots in the clouds while we have some rain or snow showers getting into westernmost New Jersey. Start out at 34 in the city. Then rain and snow showers overspread the area. Maybe some slick spots north and west in the morning hours. Now here's the key time. In the afternoon, we should start to see snow getting steadier well north and west. And it will. But as we go toward the evening hours, the new indicator on this future cast is the low is a little farther offshore, a little weaker, so that yes, we're getting periods of wet snow, but it's never totally getting really organized. And when it does, it's Sunday morning and it's happening mostly over eastern Long Island. Now, this certainly could come back a little more, and I still can't discount the idea that we could have some slush accumulation in the city, but at least the trend is getting better. We'll still definitely get a
accumulation on the island. So right now, confident about this area getting a slushy couple of inches north and west, and this area east, it's this area that could get ripped off if the coastal low forms a little farther south and east. So that's the type of adjustments we'll be looking at as we go through the upcoming weekend. Focus on the lower end of those ranges there. So it's a mixed bag tomorrow. A little snowy start on Sunday. That scoots offshore, and there'll be some clouds along the coast. Spring around 6 28 in the morning on Monday, but hopefully some sunshine from the city on westward. Stays mild into Tuesday. Mostly cloudy. Bit of snow and rain south and west tomorrow morning. Then during the day, it's snow and rain. Roadways are just wet at worst. Travel's fine. But then a steadier snow develops late, especially north and west. And instead of calling it steady wet snow, I'm saying periods of wet snow. Maybe some slippery spots off to the north and west. Here's your seven day. So a snow shower to start Sunday. Encouraged about the New York City Marathon. Amy will pick up the discussion tomorrow morning. We'll be around 40 in the afternoon. On Monday, spring arrives. 48 degrees. Couple showers early Tuesday. We're back to blustery. It's nasty for one day. And then we start to recover. And a milder trend. We really get into more of an April spring pattern after the 26th of March. That's when we turn the corner. So good news. Hopefully we can just yeah. take it down. Our coating the slushy inch or two and the half marathon will be good. We'll Fingers see. crossed. Yes. So many people. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Lee. You got it. Coming up next, we have important new health information about the dietary habits of expectant mothers. Plus, the growing support to make this fearless girl statue a permanent fixture in Lower Manhattan. Captioning is sponsored by Raymore and Flanagan. For the closest location, visit RaymoreFlanagan.com. The Lexus Command Performance Sales Event is here, where the feeling, craftsmanship, and luxury will last, but the offers will not. Experience uncommon refinement on our most luxurious models ever, including the LX, LS, and ES during the Lexus Command Performance Sales Event. But don't hesitate, this event ends March 31st. Lease the 2017 ES350 for $329 a month for 36 months. Experience amazing at your Lexus dealer. Who is that? Who is that? Emerging from his burrow. That's right, Woodchuck Chuckers, it's Groundhog. Groundhog Day, the new Broadway musical that's so much fun, it should be illegal. It's Groundhog Day, the new Broadway musical that's so much fun, it should be illegal. Who is that? Who is that? That's right, Woodchuck Chuckers. On Broadway, get tickets today. Wherever you want to go, chances are a Honda can take you there. Whether that's a camping trip, there's a room in the HRV. Thanks. Or a weekend of home improvement in the Ridgeline. Or a weekend away. In the pilot. And only Honda can bring you the Honda Dream Garage sales event. Going on now. Visit your local Honda dealer today. Eyewitness News needs your help to protect our children. Have you seen Katarina? ABC7 and Bob's Discount Furniture thank you for helping protect our children. Will the fearless girl statue on Wall Street become a permanent installation? More than 16,000 people have signed the Care to, Care to Petition, which says, easy for me to say, which says, quote, women's equality is not a temporary issue. It should not be limited to a day, week, or a month. That 50-inch tall bronze statue was installed on the eve of International Women's Day, March 8th, scheduled to be removed on April 2nd. Stay tuned. In tonight's health alert, troubling news about the dietary habits of expectant mothers. Researchers in Pittsburgh say many pregnant women are not eating an optimal diet. They say about 34% of the calories consumed by patients in the study were from empty calories, sugar-sweetened beverages, pasta dishes, grain desserts. Unhealthy maternal diets have been linked to several health problems, including fetal growth restriction. Ryan Field, up next with sports. Yeah, Bill, we got a lot going on, but just a reminder, the NYC half just days away. Here now a message from one of the persons you will see out on the course. I'm Andrew Micah, and I'm a participant in the United Airlines NYC half. I also have type 1 diabetes, and I encourage all people with juvenile diabetes to run, stay fit, and live healthy. Channel 7 is the home of the 2017 NYC half. You can watch it live this Sunday morning beginning at 7 o'clock and streaming live on ABC7. This NYC half by the mile is sponsored by Mazda. Is it possible to engineer a feeling? To create a design that moves you, 
before you even get in and craft an interior that transports you before you go anywhere. It is when it's designed for you, the driver. The new Mazda 6. Announcing a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity from Mattress Firm. Save up to 70% off famous name brands and up to $2,000 off floor models from Sealy, Tempur-Pedic, and others. Only while supplies last and only at Mattress Firm. Time Warner Cable is now Spectrum, redefining what a cable company can be, giving you the power to turn any night into a movie night with over 200 channels available in stunning HD and thousands of titles free on demand. All for $29.99 a month when you call 844-349-2999. Plus, get the freedom to surf, stream, post, and game from all your devices with Spectrum Internet, delivering the fastest starting speeds, 100 megabits per second, with no data caps, and a free modem. Just $29.99 a month. Then connect with family and friends near and far with unlimited nationwide calling and unlimited calling to Canada, Puerto Rico, and Mexico with no added taxes or fees. Get Spectrum Voice for just $29.99 a month when you call 844-349-2999. All with no contracts and a 30-day money-back guarantee. Get the power of Spectrum. Call 844-349-2999. Want to see how cool I am? Meet my new friends. Happy face, happy face, fist, rainbow. Send. You can't choose how cool your dad is. Check out the selfie I took of you. Dad, that's not a selfie. Yeah, it is. I took it myself. But at least you can yeah, choose two of your favorites from McDonald's McPick 2 menu. Choose any two for just $5 on McDonald's McPick 2 menu. Like a filet of fish quarter pounder with cheese, 10-piece chicken McNuggets, or three-piece chicken selects. Drive Infinity Q50 Signature Edition for $349 a month. Visit your Tri-State Infinity Retailer. Announcing a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity from Mattress Firm. Save up to 70% off famous name brands and up to $2,000 off floor models from Sealy, Tempur-Pedic, and others. Only while supplies last and only at Mattress Firm. Tonight's sports report is sponsored by BMW. Visit your Tri-State BMW Center today or visit us at tristatebmw.com. BMW, we only make one thing, the ultimate driving machine. Call it the push that launched a thousand tweets. Yeah, and to have your season come down to that and to lose like that, just a tough way for Seton Hall to go out. They made the big dance in back-to-back -back seasons for the first time in more than 20 years, but they are still searching for their first tourney win since 2004 after a controversial call in their game today against Arkansas. But it was the controversy at the end, yes, that everyone is talking about. Hall needs to foul, so Desi Rodriguez does just that but never makes a play on the ball. Lee and I were just talking about it. Technically, that is a flagrant foul, but Arkansas got two free throws on the ball, and that would do it. The Pirates lose a crusher 77-71. Meantime, Coach Tim Clues and Iona trying to pull the upset on Oregon. Didn't stand a chance. Big game for Oregon's Jordan Bell as the 14-seeded Gales go down 93-77. Well, we knew Jason Pierre-Paul would be back with the Giants next season. What we learned today is that he'll be with Big Blue for three more years after that. The Giants signing JPP to a four-year contract extension worth $62 million with $40 million guaranteed. Good gig. JPP said, quote, this is where I wanted to be. I couldn't imagine me being anywhere else. And in a surprising move, Giants also locking up former Jets QB Geno Smith pending the results of a physical. Pretty good gig for Geno. He's backing up Eli Manning.